every year everybody gets better and better. I'm not gonna go compete and compete for 10th or 11th or 30th. If I can't go at 100% and try to win the games every year, then what's the point? Everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm Sean Woodland with Pat Sherwood taking a closer look at the top contenders on the men's side of things at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. And you just saw the man everyone is chasing. That's Rich Froning. Does he win yet again? It pains me to say it, but yes, I think Rich Froning wins again. But I will say this. This year, I think we have a better stable of guys fit incredible badasses that are going to do everything in their power to chase Rich down and make sure that does not happen. And when you look at Rich Froning's resume, it's no secret as to why he is the favorite to win yet again. He is the three-time defending champion. He finished second in 2010. In fact, the last time Rich Froning did not finish first in an individual competition was the 2011 Open. Now you mentioned, a yeah, it has. All that guy does is win. He shows up. He wins. It's pretty simple. But there is a good stable of individual individuals behind him who are trying to chase him down. Who are the five who had the best shot of accomplishing that? I got a list of pipe hitters here okay. for you, Sean. Okay, let's start from the top with Jason Kalipa. This guy is a badass, former champ from 2008, one of the most consistent performers every year, followed by Ben Smith, just a quiet killer, incredible athlete. Scott Pancheck, only person who beat him at regionals was Rich Froning. Tommy Hackenbrook took first in Southwest, has been on the first place Ute team the past couple years in a row. And then Dan Bailey, three times games competitor, has never finished outside of the top 10. So there's your damn list for All right, well, I'm going to ask you to narrow this down even more, and I know this will not be easy, but out of those five, the three who have the best shot of maybe beating Rich Froning, but also winding up on the podium. All right. I got to start with my boy Jason Kalipa, and then we also have Ben Smith and Scott Panchik. But Jason Kalipa, incredible athlete, as I mentioned before, former champion from 2008, making his seventh appearance at the games. We all know he's big and strong, but he has a filthy 50s time of 16 minutes. Do that today, see what you get. <laughs> Running and swimming his ass off. He's not a natural athlete, but this guy is not afraid to work hard and put in his time to improve those weaknesses. And this year, his pacing is better than ever before. Work with Chris Henshaw. Guy's a legit threat. You mentioned Ben Smith, and the scary thing to me about Ben Smith is that he does so well, but he has not even reached his peak as far as a physical standpoint is concerned. How can you not like Ben Smith? Let me throw some stats at you. First of all, Ben is only 23 years old and is going to the games for his sixth time started CrossFit at 16 years old and he's been on the podium twice he's taken third he's been first place in five out of six regionals he's fit he's athletic baseball and swing background he picks things up quickly and don't be fooled like I said by his yeah. quiet demeanor this guy wants to win he just doesn't show it on the outside but he's ferocious and finally there's Scott Panchik who is a guy who managed to make things pretty interesting for Rich Froning at the Central East region yeah Scott Panchik arguably could be one of the most exciting guys to keep your eyes on this will be his third trip to the games he's been fourth twice sure his numbers are impressive first on the handstand push-up event four hang snatch 275 pounds but the x-factor deal with him is just that kind of fire in the gut mm -hmm. you could see it in his eyes he respects Rich Froning, yeah. but he doesn't fear Rich Froning, and that makes him a serious threat at the games. Now, there are some names that did not show up on your top five list that were a little bit surprising, and the first is Josh Bridges. Last year at this time, he was a guy that we were talking about who could beat Froning. It was going to wind up on the podium. He was poised to make that big comeback. Why did he not make that list? This is a painful one to talk about. I'm probably exposing myself to incredible internet hatred, but <laughs> here's why I don't think Josh is going to be on the podium. He'll do well, but not on the podium, making his third trip to the games, and he's never taken worse than seventh. He's been on the podium second place, but he doesn't display the consistency, and we've, we know that consistency wins. Bear with me on this. Okay. Last year at the games, there were 12 events. Yep. Here were his finishes. Some of them were great. Right. He had a first, a first, a first, a yeah. second, and a third. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Here are the other seven finishes. 
15th, 17th, 19th, 28th, 36th, 39th, 42nd. When you have those kind of massive swings, that's not going to put you in the top right. three. There's another guy in Southern California who was extremely impressive at regionals who didn't make the list, and that's Kenny Leverage. Kenny Leverage is one of those guys that it almost confuses me a little bit. He's an incredible athlete, incredibly fit. His numbers are amazing, but his performance of the games didn't kind of add up to what those numbers showed. He took 28th last year. I think he'll do well again, but I don't think he's going to punch into that top three. Kind of like Josh Bridges, he had some incredible things. He deads 502, 340, uh, 345 pound clean and jerk, but then we saw some swings the other way at the games last year on things that tended to be long and involve running or rowing. Row one and two hurt him. One of those was 40th place. Burden runs zigzagging a 40th on Naughty Nancy, so I think he'll be a better athlete than he was last year, but still not good enough to punch yeah. into the big boys. Now, what about Neil Maddox? He's a guy that finally cracked the top 10 last year. He's always had that potential factor. It looks like he was finally getting it together. Why did he not make the list? Neil Maddox is an athlete that absolutely intrigues me. Mm -hmm. He's a physical specimen. The guy is a beast, ninja badass, whatever you want to say. Going to the games for his fifth time, but he always tends to have something wrong. And this is just my personal opinion on that. You know, I think he's been working on his mental game with his coach, Doug Chapman, but I kind of feel like if you took Frankenstein with me for a second, okay. crazy laboratory, mm -hmm. take Chris Spieler's mindset, ability under pressure, calmness and poise, and if you put that into Neil Maddox's just physical body, yeah. you would have an unbeatable champion for the next tough. five years. Yeah. So if Neil Maddox can bring those tools on top of what he's physically capable of, this guy could win the games. Well, that is going to do it for us today. We'll be back next time to take a look at the top women's contenders. For Pat Sherwood, I'm Sean Woodland, and we'll see you soon.